say that this social, this uh, social, okay, that it's a social uh, economy action plan for the um, for our actors. You know, is really uh, timely. We see that uh, we are really in uh, at a junction. You know, uh, the recovery uh, is urgent, and so are the digital and the green uh, transition. We see that uh, the uh, European uh, population, you know, is uh, aging. We see as well that we have some issue regarding, you know, the health scares. So the social economy can really offer, you know, effective solution to uh, to all of these uh, challenge. And this is why we, we decided to put, you know, uh, such kind of action, you know, in our European political uh, agenda. Uh, Key objective. So, if you go back, please, if you could go back, you know, to yes, thanks. Uh, if you see, you know, this slide, it's a really important you know, to see that we have three main pillars. Uh, the, the the Commission action plan, you know, for the social economy, uh, puts forward concrete measures to unlock the potential of social economy organization and social enterprise. The three pillars is, first of all, we need to develop an enabling framework for this social economy. Uh, for example, I'm talking about policy and legal framework that needs to be uh, adapted to uh, to the specific business model. Uh, talking about uh, uh, the role of state aid, uh, public procurement, taxation, just to uh, uh, to name a few. So the uh, the action plan will seek to engage with all relevant authorities, stakeholders around this objective, uh, at national, regional, and at international level. Framework conditions. Second one. We need to opening up, you know, uh, opportunities. Uh, we need to uh, reflect on how to better uh, facilitate access to funding, business support, networks, and really wants to create, uh, let's say, concrete uh, support available to all the uh, actors, you know, uh, to unlock their potential. For for example, one figures for. 2021 uh, 20, till 2027, uh, we have decided that the Commission will increase its support beyond the 2.5 billion uh, euro that were allocated, you know, to the social uh, to the social economy in the previous uh, financial uh, period. Third one, after opening opportunities, of course, you know, is recognition and awareness, uh, awareness raising. Uh, this is where we need to work as well, we know, with policy makers, uh, uh, financial intermediaries, social partners, and so on, you know, to explain to them the importance and the positive impact of all social economy stakeholders, you know, uh, for a resilient European uh, economy. If we go now to the next slide, uh, not this, this one, and not after, again, because I will jump some of the slides again. Yes, let's focus just before. Yes, let's focus, you know, maybe on, um, on some key action that uh, we have. The plans, the action plan mentioned about uh, 60 action, and I will not enter into the details, uh, but let me just maybe uh, focus on some of them. What do we want to achieve? First of all, we understood, you know, we clearly understood, you know, stakeholder concern um, about, you know, a clear entry point, you know, for the social economy stakeholders, because those people, they want to understand what we are doing, you know, on policy. They want to, to see, you know, how they could get uh, finance for their project, how they could receive, you know, dedicated support. This is the reason why we are going to prepare a new EU social economy gateway, which will be renew a clear entry point, you know, for social economy actors looking for information, you know, uh, in uh, in the coming uh, in the coming months. Normally, you know, uh, we will. Uh, we are currently working with our colleagues from DG Employment, you know, on this, and this uh, social economy gateway will be available, you know, in 2023. So first of all, visibility, clear entry point. Second key element is much more, you know, on um, on uh, working on on, on 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 legal certainty. I would say we need to develop, you know, uh, some information 
to help uh, public authority to understand the concept of the social economy. So this is the reason why we are preparing uh, EU recommendation, you know, on the social economy that will be adopted next year. And this will be uh, uh, accompanied by guidance, training courses for public officials on various topics that are relevant for the social economy. Um, so, for example, no, Luca. Yes, thank you, Luca. Yeah, uh, we are we are we are working on state aid. We will work on social uh, responsible public procurement, taxation, social impact measurement, just to help public policy officers to better frame uh, legal um, uh, legal certainty. You know, uh, for the social economy to thrive. You know, in their country. Again, another one in the way forward, a key action is, of course, you know, uh, new financial products. Here, I will not enter to details. We have already a lot. Uh, we will have to make them, you know, really um, available for the social economy. One, uh, one, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, found that we have, which is the invest EU program, it will be really key and is key, you know, to develop a uh, social, uh, social enterprise. Maybe the last one, which is important, especially for the young people, is the Youth Entrepreneurship Policy Academy. This will be launched, you know, uh, uh, normally in 2022 uh, or early next year. And this will uh, seek to increase the appeal of social entrepreneurship, especially in here among uh, young people, and to ensure that the social economy businesses model are present, you know, in entrepreneurship education, you know, curricula. So many action, these are the key action. Uh, but another one where we in particular in DigiGrow we are working on is the question of transition. And then we can go to the next slide. Um, uh, I will, uh, uh, yes, you can, yes. I will just summarize quickly, you know, why we are working you know, on this transition pathway. Uh, we clearly see that the social economy, the proximity and the social economy uh, is a key pillar of our new industrial policy. Without entering into details, we have seen that the industrial policy uh, will have a uh, key objective to support, you know, the treatment transition. Social economy actors, you know, are part of the uh, of this industrial uh, strategy. Uh, we are currently co-creating co a different transition pathway my colleague Kirsty will mention and will explain, you know, the transition pathway for the tourism. But what we are doing and what we need to do is really, you know, to uh, to boost, uh, to boost, you know, transition, digitalization, greener practices for uh, social economy um, actors. If we go to the to the next slide, uh, you will see, uh, in particular, that uh, we are currently co-creating with stakeholders, you know, around three different topics on, on resilience, how again, you know, to bring some supportive business environment for those enterprises, those organizations located, you know, in the social economy uh, ecosystem uh, to be uh, more impactful. How can we work on impact investment for their resilience? About green transition, it's everything relating, you know, to, uh, to the scale up, to the spillover uh, effect of, uh, of green transition. How can we work, for example, on local green deals uh, with social economy actors, social infrastructure, energy poverty? And everybody knows that the discussion about energy is really a, a key priority, you know, or, uh, for the Commission nowadays. And of course, digital transition, how to increase digital skills, you know. I mean, uh, personally, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working, you know, in, in, in a charity sometimes during the, the weekend. Those people really need, you know, uh, digital skills, you know, in order, you know, to uh, to be more impactful, you know, in their uh, in their uh, area of concerns. How can we work, for example, with those young people that wants to develop, for example, you know, uh, social tech, you know, uh, initiative? Question relating to data management. This is something that we need to take into consideration. And how can we work with all of these actors, you know, to prepare uh, plans? action that will be thereafter you know co-implemented you know by them so if we go now to the to the last uh, slide of my presentation uh, about you know this roadmap to the to the transition pathway that we are uh, 
working with stakeholders. Let's say that um, when we have launched you know, the social economy uh, action plan in December 2021, you know, uh, it was accompanied by what we called, you know, uh, scenario for the transition. And we invited stakeholders, you know, to reply to some questionnaire to an EU survey. We received nearly 80 uh, replies. Um, and this uh, EU survey was open until uh, uh, end of February. So it was really a question about, have you say, tell us, you know, as regard green, as regard digitalization, what can we do, you know, for the social economy ecosystem? Today, we are developing, you know, this transition pathway. This is what we call the co-creation phase in spring, and it will finish, let's say, in, in, in some weeks. This is the reason why thereafter I will go to another workshops really dedicated on green issue, where we invited uh, nearly um, uh, 50, uh, 50 experts to work with us to develop solution, possible solution, you know, to help greener practices, greener process uh, for the social economy. We will come in autumn, in fall, uh, with a policy document with some main ideas, some main strategy, you know, on transition. And thereafter, we will invite stakeholders to co-implement with us. We, sorry, we will ask, you know, stakeholders to co-implement with us, you know, uh, uh, this, uh, this strategy. So what are we going to do? We will <sighs> just invite them, you know, to say, I am ready, you know, to commit myself. I am ready, you know, to uh, make pledges, you know, uh, to support, you know, uh, uh, the development, greener practices and um, and uh, digitalization of uh, of this uh, of this ecosystem. So now uh, we are working with them. Uh, we are uh, reflecting with them on dedicated action and on uh, dedicated measures, but we will only succeed, you know, if all of our stakeholders, you know, uh, can work and uh, will uh, work with us, you know, on the uh, on the implementation. So really, this phase of validation of implementation, you know, will be key, you know, for the success, you know, of the transition pathway. That's really, in a nutshell, what I wanted to say. It was kind of, in French, we say survol d'hélicoptère, you know, about the social economy action plan, the transition pathway. But as you can see, and maybe one key word would be that we have really a lot, you know, on the plate. Uh, we really want to push, you know, social economy, you know, high on the agenda. Of course, talking about tourism, we see a lot of actors, you know, that are in the tourism that are active, of course, you know, in, uh, in the social uh, economy. And uh, what is important, you know, for, uh, uh, for us is that uh, we can only uh, succeed if we are working all together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, now, uh, Kirsty, I think the floor is yours. <laughs> if I... Okay, so then, <laughs> then I will continue. Uh, I will share my slides myself. Uh, I think it's... Uh... Ah, no, I can't share, it looks like. Ah, uh, okay. So if I can't, then I must ask you to, to show them. I, I had hoped that I could share, but the whole host okay. doesn't allow that. <laughs> Dan, yes. you can share now. Ah, I can. Okay, thanks. And Kirsty, again, sorry to be impolite. I will have to leave you. Thank you very much. And I hope that you will have uh, uh, a good discussion, you know, uh, uh, within your group this morning. Have a good day then. Bye, Patrick. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, so I'm I'm sharing now, and I will be putting it to the presentation mode. Uh, I hope you see it in the presentation mode. Can you please confirm? Do you see the presentation? Yes. Yes, we see the yes. presentation, but not full screen. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so then there is something wrong because it is in full screen for me for the moment. Uh, I will need to check what is the issue. Uh, I will try to share again.
do you say, see it now in the full screen? Yes. Okay, yeah. excellent. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm trying to give a quick overview on the transition pathway for tourism because I know that we are already late in the agenda and you have many, many important and interesting things to discuss. So uh, Patrick actually already explained the context for the transition pathways in general. The industrial strategy and its updated recognize that all the industrial ecosystems need to accelerate their green and digital transition and improve their resilience, especially uh, with the COVID crisis. And now we have seen also other crises. So the idea was that all the industrial ecosystems would develop uh, transition pathways in cooperation, collaboration with their stakeholders as joint roadmaps of uh, road to take until 2030. And uh, since tourism was an eco the ecosystem that was really hardly hit by the COVID, it was the one that started first. Our objective in this work was to concretely uh, uh, engage with all the stakeholders and take um, into account the relationship that tourism actually have because with uh, stakeholders on different sectors, because it actually composes of several sectors of transport, on hospitality, on cultural and creative inter industries, travel agencies, and so on. And it has really important links with ecosystems, such as uh, proximity and social economy, cultural and creative industries, agri-food, mobility and transport, and so on. So our transition pathway aim to be an overview uh, of, of the different aspects that need to be considered in the transition of the tourism as collaboration of its stakeholders. So we established a long uh, co-creation process. It was altogether eight months long, where we started with the staff working document, with our proposed scenarios, had online consultation, several meetings with the stakeholders, altogether 16 of them. In additionally, we had meetings with the member states, EU institutions, industrial forum, to ensure that we are setting a good base that also other transition pathways could follow. As the end result, we had published on we have published on the 4th of February the transition pathway policy report uh, for tourism, which uh, is today available in 22 languages. If you are interested in it. We translated it so that it would be easier to disseminate and use in all the different EU member states. It outlines actions on several different areas and includes a specific section on funding and the monitoring and co-implementation. The areas that are covered by the actions and objectives outlined in this policy report uh, can be grouped under the policy and governance, digital transition, green transition, skills and resilience, and the overall support of stakeholders in all of these aspects. And when we are now thinking of the social economy, there are several aspects here that have a specific relevance or where social economy approaches could be very useful. For example, uh, improving the collaborative and smart destination governance, expanding the measurement and the monitoring of the impact of tourism, improving the availability, understanding of what services are available and to whom, to, to, to finding the matching people with, with what is available and the providers, uh, creating more sustainable, more circular services, and overall diversification of the tourism services based on the local strengths, based on the local specificities, ensuring that they are they have positive net impact both for the residents and the visitors. Of course, networking and best practice sharing is something well, I think that uh, any type of sharing approaches can bring additional value as well in all of these aspects. So uh, the social economy was even specifically recognized in the transition pathway report because it mentions that, that it is one of the important industrial ecosystems that be considered that should be considered, for example, for providing new types of platform based services, maybe for local transportation, uh, food supply, cultural and active tourism experiences, and considering, as I said earlier, visitors and residents, both of them. 
because the, the tourism should be having positive, net positive impact for all. Uh, because the tourism ecosystem is very much formed by micro enterprises and SMEs, it's a 99.8, if I remember correctly, percent of the ecosystem actors are small actors. So the social economy approaches can be an important change factor of getting them engaged, getting them joining together to creating new types of approaches, as well as creating new uh, new types and more flexible approaches that would be useful in case of different types of crises and improving their resilience. So uh, when thinking of the transition pathway overall, as I mentioned, it recognizes especially the well-being of the local communities and the resilience among the key objectives. So we could consider that the so community cooperatives, for example, could con contribute to the promotion and governance of the destination, coordination and management of tourism flows between the different service providers, facilities, sharing of infrastructures and resources between tourism and service providers, co-design governance or the mechanism as uh, platforms. Uh, that are related to bookings and reservations and uh, management of tourism services, local supply chains for resources, why not also for the workforce or local renewable energy projects and overall monitoring the impact of the tourism to the local communities and environment, which is a very important issue to be sure that we are advancing towards the positive and uh, productive directions. So, uh, where we are now in the tourism transition pathway is that we are establishing, or we have already started, the implementation phase, which we are calling co-implementation and building a together for EU tourism community. Because here, now at this phase, it's important that the objectives and actions that we have co-created with the stakeholders, whether they are on local level, regional level, national level or European level, and whether they are public or private actors, that they take action, that they work together so that these transition objectives can be achieved. So our key elements for this co-implementation phase is to continue communicating, reaching out to new stakeholders to be aware of what we are working for, what has been already created by a significant group of stakeholders and to get engaged and join to this community. We are gathering concrete commitments by the stakeholders, reflecting and expressing what is it that they concretely plan and commit to do. We will be establishing stakeholder working groups as an informal commission expert group that will help the commission to understand better the needs of the stakeholders and to design support mechanisms for them and to monitor the overall progress of the transition pathway. And we will be supporting all of this with the online collaboration platform that will be providing an integrated access point based on the user needs and roles to the specific interest areas in the transition pathway actions and topics. We will ensure that we will engage all the EU institutions and all the services to keep the tourism transition pathway working well with the policy developments on the different fields. And we aim to assess the progress regularly to see where we are, has it worked, have we progressed, what might need to be refined or considered in order to progress better. This is a collaboration process and it's dynamic and open. We need to be flexible and adaptable, and that's how we have been setting this up. So about the stakeholder commitments, because this is something I wanted to, to highlight to you. This is where we are now concretely gathering stakeholders together and to, to reflect what is it that they could do to align with the transition pathway objectives with their own specific actions and targets. It was the stakeholders who defined that these are important areas to work on. So what would be for each one of them an action that they could do? Because everyone has their different targets. Uh, I mean, their different contexts, their different starting points, and maybe different priorities that need to be considered. Not There is no one size fits all, but everyone can contribute in their way. 
So we opened an online call for commitments on the 8th of uh, February, where we have been inviting stakeholders to concretely express their commitments. We are planning, we are preparing to publish the first stock taking of these commitments next week. And we will keep the commitment collection open because the objective is to continuously engage more stakeholders to the community. So we will be uh, publishing the updated and extended collection of commitments in uh, four months time and continue. So uh, at the moment, we think around uh, three, two, three times, two, three times a year, we will be publishing the new sets of the commitments. So you see here the link uh, to the commitment collection form. And also in the end, uh, I will give, uh, or you will get the presentation and there is a full list of uh, relevant links to you. So my main message to you is that the tourism transition pathway is a collaborative effort for us all. So please, uh, now you are informed, please share further the information, read the report carefully and last discussion on what you could be doing in your organization or together with the other organizations to create concrete actions and commitments. So how the links between the transition pathway objectives links with your existing strategies and objectives or whether it would make sense for you to refine your strategies and get, take some specific actions that would align you with these objectives and accelerate your digital and green transition. You should be taking, of course, advantage of those players who already have knowledge on developing green and digital aspects. Uh, so there are several uh, funded projects under regional funds, under research and innovation funds, under, under LIFE program uh, or under uh, the destination awards that might provide useful collaboration partners or links to actors that might be relevant for you to establish new types of approaches. So please try to prepare some concrete key actions, plan how they would work, engage the people necessary and present them as concrete pledges. So as said, the pledge collection remains open all the time. We will be publishing what we have now next week and the next time we will be publishing in October with the current planning. We will also in, uh, in the next months uh, publish a call for experts to join the informal commission expert group that would be forming the working groups that support following up the transition. And we will be establishing the stakeholder collaboration platform, hopefully in early next year to integrate all the available support for all actors. So I just say thank you very much for your attention. And I hope very much that you will get engaged and joining us in the Together for EU tourism community. Thank you very much, uh, Kirsty. Um, uh, are there some questions or uh, comments uh, from uh, from uh, our participants? Maybe I can. You can uh, raise your hand electronically, uh, please, because in case because I cannot see you all uh, <laughs> on the same screen. So, if uh, uh, Charlotte and Belanger. You're yes. Muted. yes, hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so my name is Charles Belanger, director of ISTO. Uh, well, first of all, uh, congratulations again for the uh, 25th anniversary of DSS and thanks for this initiative this morning. Um, I would like to come back on this transition pathway for tourism. Um, I, uh, ISTO, as uh, many of you know, um, has uh, participated and um, provided proposal uh, and is part of the, uh, was part of this co-construction and uh, uh, hopefully will be part of the co-implementation uh, uh, process. I'm very happy to know that uh, there will be, uh, well, first of all, that the document was translated in several uh, languages. So uh, this is something I didn't know. So we will disseminate this information to our members in several countries. Second, very happy to know there will be this platform in 2023, uh, allowing a better um, cooperation between all stakeholders involved and also 
uh, happy of the uh, this initiative of the these uh, working groups because one of the big problem we always said at the AU level is that there was a lack of um, permanent or structural um, connection, I would say, between uh, tourism stakeholders and AU institution or uh, uh, the commission. Uh, so I think this is, this is a really important step uh, because we know, for instance, there is a mechanism um, between the commission and the um, member states through the Tourism Action Committee. It's been there for years, but regarding the, 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 the other stakeholders, and we know that tourism is a very fragmented uh, sector with uh, people coming from so many sectors, from so many different sides, and, and, and um, hopefully this, um, this uh, platform and these working groups will uh, will uh, provide uh, uh, I would say uh, uh, an answer to this uh, gap that has been there for four years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Charles, for your uh, um, comment. Uh, Ranko uh, Milic uh, from uh, Sedra Split, Croatia. Ranko, I have to ask you to be very, very quick. Uh, just a quick comment because uh, we are much behind of the agenda, not for your fault, but for <laughs> our fault on Zoom. <laughs> Sorry about that. No problem. Just wanted to maybe uh, also thanks thank uh, for this initiative and uh, for this presentation of this. Uh, 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 sorry, my uh, Ranko, we can't hear you very well. Mm, very it's well a well. little bit low volume. Just a moment. You hear me better now? Yes. Yeah, sorry. So I just wanted to to first congratulate for the for the for the initiative, and the other thing I wanted to ask because I saw this uh, uh, seventy actions or I don't know seventy uh, topics uh, uh, on your agenda. Uh, on, uh, what already uh, uh, our colleague uh, uh, Mr. Belanger said that you know, the problem of tourism is actually that is multi uh, sectorial. It, it it connects many sectors and. The, uh, I, um, I would like to see more integrated action source or opportunities where actually you can connect uh, uh, several or even all sectors together, working together in some uh, regional or macro regional actions. So I would like to ask if there are some initiatives in that direction to actually create some integrated interventions. And also I would like to know how these commitments function. So like what, uh, what, what is the, what is the, uh, 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 the, the organization and, 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 and the way methodology of commitments and how we can actually contribute to this process. So that's for, the, for this part. Thanks. Okay. Th thank you very much, uh, Ranko. If there are no, uh, okay, uh, Kirsty, I think we can move to the next uh, to the next uh, part of the meeting. Um, uh, but I think he would like to have an answer. Yeah. Ah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so I, can, I, can, I can try to, try to answer very quickly. Uh, please have a look at the actions because some of them, for example, uh, is about the comprehensive tourism strategies or collaborative uh, destination management, which are exactly about considering all the sectors and putting them together. So, uh, so, so these are included in some types of the actions. Uh, the commitment they concretely work so that you define in your organization a pledge, you define an action and a target, and it links to the transition pathway. You write it through the online commitment form. We will read it. We will contact you. If it seems to be publishable like that, it will be published and shown to the whole world. And then we will be supporting it by sharing information between people who are working on the same issues by promoting it in the relevant occasions and then a year after asking you so how are you progressing in your own commitment so you will be the one responsible of setting the target and following it thank you thank you no yes i i didn't want to 
no, no, not a low rank to have his answer. <laughs> I was, uh, <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks. I, I was mentioning that uh, <laughs> after this we need to move uh, <laughs> to okay. the next panel. <laughs> uh, so, and uh, I have to be even more impolite uh, than uh, than Patrick, uh, <laughs> because not only for this, but uh, because uh, I, um, uh, Giovanna, you have to excuse, excuse us. Uh, your presentation is. Um, Yes. is heavy i we need to to reload it and oh, so no, i uh, can uh, i can share okay if you can share if you if you okay, feel more meantime, i will go thank you very much and i wish you a very good continuation <laughs> thank you very much yeah. bye no i am not able to share now i don't know why uh can you um, yes you have the permission yeah i have yeah, yeah. no wait ah, okay okay thank you very much uh. okay giovanna barney uh, cop culture <laughs> the, okay. the floor is yours Okay, thank you very much, and thank to invite me to this uh, uh, anniversary, important anniversary. So, um, I am Giovanna Barni, I am uh, the president of Cop Culture, uh, that is uh, the uh, one of the leaders, uh, I think, one of the largest cooperative companies uh, working in the field, uh, in the field of uh, cultural culture and cultural heritage in Italy and sustainable tourism. Uh, we are a cooperative, so we, are, uh, we share a value system uh, that uh, give importance not only to the economical growth, but also uh, to people and territories uh, where we work. And so we are committed every day to enhance the growth of communities and promote social cohesion. Uh, our, mission, uh, um, our mission needs a new approach to technology uh, because, uh, because uh, we need uh, an approach uh, to technology uh, that is uh, human-centered, uh, humanistic, uh, that, uh, because uh, technology must be the solution to uh, enhance, uh, to empower visitors. And uh, the other characteristic is that uh, our approach is collaborative because uh, we, focus this, uh, we focus on interaction and uh, on the cooperation among different stakeholders. And uh, uh, it is uh, a sustainable, it is a sustainable approach uh, because uh, we are committed in achieving many goals of sustainable uh, development, uh, as you can see. Um, we are involved, uh, we, we, we try to uh, develop uh, an uh, integrated, uh, a digital ecosystem uh, for sustainable tourism. And uh, uh, now we have uh, a platform uh, that allow to increase accessibility and social inclusion and to connect cultural heritage to people. And uh, the other focus is uh, on territory because uh, our platform uh, is uh, based on uh, cooperation and community engagement in order to connect uh, cultural heritage, territories, and platform. So uh, the focus on people means uh, that uh, our uh, uh, digital tools uh, are focused on people journey in order to follow uh, visitors before, during, and after the visit. And uh, uh, to be focused on territories means uh, to connect uh, the local tangible and tangible cultural heritage, itineraries, and landscape, and to enhance capacity building of the local operators. 
So I want to show you some uh, examples of our uh, digital uh, tools and our uh, digital ecosystem. Um, the first, uh, let's start from uh, the tools that allow to increase accessibility and social inclusion in order to uh, overcome the educational gaps among, among visitors. Uh, the first one is uh, a digital tool that uh, allow through uh, virtual and mixed reality uh, to make more accessible uh, archeological sites to every kind of people. And the other one is a remote platform, is an online platform that allow to visit, uh, to visit uh, archaeological sites and, uh, uh, and uh, remote archaeological sites. So let's start from the first one is uh, Caracalla, is named Caracalla for Dimension. And uh, uh, it is uh, a tool that uh, use uh, augmented and mixed re re reality, not only for uh, spectac spectacularized uh, uh, cultural heritage, but uh, uh, especially for, uh, for uh, um, make able visitors uh, to understand, uh, to recognize uh, uh, the, uh, the ancient ruins, uh, the function of the ancient ruins. Uh, I want to show you some. Sorry for the audio. I think you understand. Uh, so um, we we help uh, we really help uh, visitors uh, during uh, their visit uh, to to recognize uh, to understand uh, the ancient ruins uh, in uh, in uh, every part of uh, Italy. And uh, the second one is uh, uh, the platform Live Culture uh, that offer visitors uh, the opportunity to enter archaeological sites or museum, even when the sites are not accessible. So we use this platform during uh, the uh, pandemic closure of museums, but now we go on to use, to use this platform to allow visitors, uh, uh, especially visitors that uh, uh, cannot be able to visit, uh, uh, to, to travel, such as uh, visitors uh, uh, with uh, some disabilities uh, or we visitors that uh, have no money uh, to, to travel. Or for example, for schools, because uh, for many times, uh, uh, Italian schools uh, uh, were not allowed to visit uh, uh, to visit their town to visit uh, uh, to visit uh, uh, archaeological sites and museums. So we have many examples of this platform. And another feature, important feature, is that this platform is not for a uh, automatic guided tools, automatic visitor tool, tools, but uh, it is uh, a tour with uh, an archaeological archeo operator uh, in order to, to allow our, uh, uh, our uh, workers to maintain, uh, to maintain their job also during the pandemic crisis. We can go on because uh, because uh, we have another another important uh, um, another important uh, uh, approach uh, to technology that I want to show you, and it is a second focus uh, on territory. 
Uh, we have uh, also in this case, uh, I have uh, two, uh, two examples, uh, two projects uh, to show you. And uh, the first one is uh, a platform for uh, territorial networks uh, promoted by Lazio region in order to promote uh, internal area, rural internal area uh, of uh, their region, of our region. And uh, the other one is uh, Bolivian Dando, that is a, a platform uh, made, developed uh, during a project uh, with uh, also with uh, Maurizio Davoglio, with, uh, uh, with a partnership of uh, um, eight years and, uh, and uh, the development cooperation. So uh, the first one is uh, Tecne, and uh, you can see the map. Uh, there is an important uh, internal area between uh, Civitavecchia, Ab, and Rome. And uh, uh, every, every year, more than two million uh, visitors uh, arrive in Civitavecchia Arbor, but uh, they don't visit. Uh, they visit only uh, two sites in Rome, and uh, and uh, so we have uh, we have a lot of uh, itineraries that uh, must be valorized uh, because uh, uh, there are uh, the Etruscan civilization that uh, uh, leave many important uh, uh, archaeological sites. So uh, we we made a digital multi-stakeholder and multi-channel platform. Uh, to co-project and co-produce territorial itineraries with a network of operators and local institutions in order to, uh, to spread the benefit of tourism all over the region and not only in one, uh, in, in, in uh, not only Rome. And, uh, and uh, the importance of the platform is that uh, it is useful also to contrast uh, over tourism and promote uh, innovative small, small scale tourism. So uh, we, uh, this is uh, the, the, our digital platform. As you can see, we can uh, with uh, an all-in-one platform uh, we can uh, we can uh, allow visitors uh, to inform uh, when they are still at home, uh, to buy ticket, uh, to access uh, to the cultural sites, uh, to uh, uh, to to when they are when they when they arrive uh, they can uh, they can have uh, um, didactic uh, uh, tools audio guides, and we can also have uh, many, other, uh, many other tools, uh, totem or other tools, to make conscious visitors, to make more conscious visitor. And I can show a little... Yeah, can, can, can I ask you, uh, Giovanna, to stay in like a couple okay. of minutes, please? Okay. So you can see the, the many itineraries in uh, Lazio region and uh, what we can do with uh, uh, our all-in-one platform. And uh, now we arrive to the last one uh, platform, uh, that is uh, the platform, uh, uh, the first digital platform for solidarity and community tourism in Bolivia. Uh, this is the result of a project, uh, of a project uh, in Bolivia, and uh, you can see the, the platform at the link uh, in this slide. And uh, uh, this is a process that leads to the development of the platform. Uh, you can see many words, many, many steps that, uh, that was uh, before, uh, that uh, we, uh, we, uh, we had before in the relation before because, uh, because uh, we start from the capacity building uh, when uh, we, uh, we go to a participatory bottom-up planning 
uh, in order to uh, in order to create a community maps of natural and cultural resources and uh, and then this community map was uh, uh, was a source uh, to to the development of the platform uh, this is uh, uh, these are some outputs uh, 63 communities in bolivia involved in the project uh, this is a, the slide that shows a community map and uh, this is the last uh, the last video i want only to 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 show you uh, the participatory mapping and uh, the participatory factor we we did so um, uh, i want only to leave in conclusion uh, some uh, keywords uh, some keywords of uh, uh, how uh, the technology can be the solution a useful solution for uh, sustainable tourism in social economy I think that uh, the keywords are uh, uh, community map, mapping, uh, territories, uh, networking, uh, uh, because, uh, because uh, uh, innovation is not only uh, a technological uh, innovation, but must be accompanied by, by uh, social innovation. And this is uh, the challenge for uh, cultural and touristic cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joanna. Uh, it's always very, very hard uh, because in these online meetings, uh, uh, the times are always very little. Okay, okay, uh, no, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, and, and, and you have so much to, to say, that is, uh, <laughs> and, but, uh, Thanks. So I, I suggest that because we go it's a work uh, is a ten years uh, ten years work of my company. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long way. Yes, exactly. And then uh, uh, sometimes, well, uh, not all the, the the social economy or social enterprise world or organization are are small because in 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 the case of Cop Culture. We we have a large company, right? No, it's a, it's a, I don't know now exactly how um what what are your numbers? Now now it's quite a medium company uh, because of the due to the pandemic crisis. So we we uh, we lost a, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, revenue, but uh, but uh, we are here <laughs> to, to fight again. <laughs> Well, that's the famous resilience uh, that, uh, that uh, cooperative. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank I you. so this is was exactly what part of of uh, of the puzzle uh, in the map. Uh, it uh, was about how to combine digital tools with local communities uh, in a social economy and sustainable way. I uh, would move uh, from Italy and international perspective uh, to Poland to West Pomerania. Uh, thank you very much, Giovanna. Powell. <laughs> Hello, good morning. I'm happy to be with you. Uh, my name is Paweł Klimek. I'm from Poland, from West Pomerania region. I would like to thank you for a short journey uh, to the West Pomerania social economy sector. Uh, I would like to share my screen. Just let me, uh, probably it should work if I will do in that way, hopefully. Do you see the full screen? Nope, it's not working. Okay, I'm looking for my colleagues or so maybe, oh, it's working okay. So let, let me do again. Uh, no, it was okay. No, it was okay. Okay, uh, great, perfect. Uh, so um, let's go for a journey. Uh, we are the uh, Chauves, the West Pomerania Network of Social Economy Support uh, Centers. We are the uh, proud uh, member of Social Economy Europe and proud member of uh, DSIS Network. On a daily basis, uh, we are focused uh, on accelerating the development uh, of uh, social economy uh, on daily economy and enterprises uh, using uh, our services. 
Uh, but that what I would like to tell you more is not about uh, who we are, but uh, what's happening in uh, our in our region. Uh, the Wasp Mariania to to them to you who who, know, who don't know, we are talking about the the most uh, northwestern region of uh, Poland, next to the uh, Baltic Sea and the uh, and the Germany border. Uh, as you can see, this is one of the map of uh, West Pomerania, including uh, our uh, local regional attractions. And what is important, and we are proud of it, uh, that uh, few of them, even many, uh, are also the attractions um, managed and the um, ongoing uh, social economy and activity. Uh, what is also important uh, in, in uh, that uh, now we are talking about developing the uh, European ecosystem. So we are talking about tourism ecosystem, we are talking about uh, the uh, social economic proximity ecosystem, but we are overlapping, we are uh, filling the gaps, we are uh, stretching together as ecosystems. And in my presentation, I would like to tell you how this uh, green, digital, uh, and the social transitions uh, um, stretch the themselves um, uh, together. Uh, we as a West Pomeranian region who wish to be a leader in the blue and green uh, growth and ensure the high quality of inhabitants life, which is important also in using our uh, natural uh, qualities, which we have in the, uh, in the region. Uh, please, all of you will be feel invited to, to, to visit our region. As you see, uh, uh, our in infrastructure is getting better and better with the with the years we are using the the, the blue uh, blue and uh, uh, beautiful um, and um, attractive to, to, to our guests uh, but uh, what i think is important that uh, for the last at least uh, in 10 years uh, when we are talking we will be we, and we are talking about development of uh, tourism in west pomerania we will focus uh, on the seaside so, uh, if i will go back uh, to this to, to this map there's a seaside and a huge region below uh, and this huge region below is a great uh, cultural natural uh, cultural heritage natural qualities uh, but uh, very small infrastructure in the name of hotels accommodation places uh, and services and uh, there is a place uh, where the social economy uh, appears and where social economy exists uh, so um, also as a very short background to better understand what i will be talking about uh, in different countries, we've had we have different approach to the, the social economy. Uh, in Poland, we are pretty young ones. Uh, we are talking about the social economy and social economy enterprises in modern about well, 15, uh, 15 years. Uh, so if we are talking about the uh, developed uh, social enterprises, we are talking about the enterprises which uh, deal on the market at uh, four or five years at least. If we are talking about social enterprises, we have a micro and a small enterprises uh, at all because we are on the beginning of the um, development uh, as a sectors in, in, in the Poland. Uh, but we are growing. We are growing very, um, very fastly um, and uh, very sustainably. Uh, that is uh, that is very important. That, uh, as I told you before, uh, the social economy uh, plays a key role in building the local development of the tourist uh, offer uh, based on the local coming from the back, uh, playing a key, key uh, operating capacity. Uh, of course, we have like um, great examples like uh, like, like Jomsburg Veneta village uh, built by Association of Slavian Vikings Jomsburg Veneta, which is uh, the biggest open air museum in, in the Poland or even one of the biggest in uh, in the whole Europe with the festivals coming thousands of uh, uh, people, um, historical um, recreation and so on and so on. So there are huge uh, tourist products deal by social economy and uh, But on the side of these examples, we have also very, uh, very active, very powerful, but very small and a whole, um, a whole the region. So having in this mind, let's go for a journey. So to take a journey, you have to take a first step. And these steps are done 
on daily basis in different uh, areas uh, of, of our region, dealt by the organization which uh, coming from the uh, from the society from the neighborhood who are uh, who are living there and they are trying to uh, better understand and to better live in their neighborhood. If there's something uh, is changing, they are understanding that they their neighborhood is important and they're trying to transform it. So this this reading uh, the, uh, the, the 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 reading on the right uh, right bottom is this is uh, the most beautiful place uh, in the world. So you just arrive to your destination. So this it, there's a trans transforming coming from understanding the place where we are to the understanding that this place can be something which we can share, on which we can um, uh, create and build um, uh, the tourist offer, on which we can cre create this the social and economical impact to uh, to our uh, local uh, neighborhood. And what is the most important from our point of view is that. Uh, uh, the local social economy entities have the awareness of uh, awareness uh, of, um, of of the values rooted in the DNA in the heart. So the tourist offer done by social economy entities growing from the local societies uh, are based on that. What is the clue uh, of of the place where the, it is uh, it is the offer? Uh, so. If you go for a journey, uh, sometimes you need sometimes uh, take a, take, a, take a, someone takes you a, um, a ride, and uh, that's what is important in our region. Uh, that the social economic ideas which are growing, which are developing, uh, are also very uh, strongly uh, cooperating with uh, the, the local authorities. Uh, um, you might and you should to know that all the, the, we are the beautiful region, but the uh, region with uh, also uh, with a lot of um, A road connection uh, only if you, only few growing cities uh, as a uh, as a places of of the development. So ninety percent of our region is are is are the rural areas. Uh, it means that uh, someone who is looking for the attractions normally going on the seaside. The seaside is a place where all accommodation all services are, um, are centered. And below, below we have a lot of uh, great activities, but these great yeah, he lost connection. And uh, but uh, the, the the connection uh, problems were not uh, only in. Uh, I was reconnecting. Just keep it. Okay, great. So connections uh, are bad not only in West Pomerania but also in Brussels uh, because uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, yes, yes. I, I, I'm it's in Brussels. In Brussels currently, so no, no, no. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sorry uh, about so that. So coming ca coming to the story. Uh, uh, so coming to the story. Uh, Example of the social economy and Titus River of Stretching are coming from the, the city movements, uh, uh, guys and girls who are focused on the, um, of the cycling uh, cycling society uh, also uh, were trying to, 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 to change the um, the attitude of, of authorities to the, um, uh, to the, um, to the, um, the cycling tourism, uh, to the cy cycling infrastructures. Uh, coming from this story uh, is uh, the um, understanding of uh, authorities uh, is transferring the members of the society Society, to the members uh, of the local authority uh, and together uh, according to the strategic approach of being green uh, creating the idea of um, uh, biking uh, biking trails uh, through whole the region which can connect uh, the spread um, social economy and the tourist attractions and allowing uh, tourists to uh, in green way um, uh, explore the possibilities uh, and attractions of our region, of course, connected with uh, all digital um, tools like, like the mobile phone guides, uh, 
uh, maps, uh, interactive uh, guides, uh, access by web page, and so on and so on. You can uh, reach every case uh, on the web page, and this is also uh, co-financed by, by the local public funds. But this is also important that this kind of uh, cooperation between the, the authorities uh, on the meta level with small uh, examples of the, the social economies create the, the, the products itself. Uh, okay, so someone take you a ride, but sometimes you will take someone for, for, for on the road. Uh, and we have also the examples when uh, growing a social economy enterprise uh, is taking the others uh, to, to, to the game and creating the opportunities. Uh, this is an example from the Kushalin Association of uh, Narrow Gauge uh, Train, uh, which is also an example of um, um, Mm, of preserving the uh, preserving the historical uh, heritage, the the, the narrow gauge uh, train which was abandoned was re renovated uh, and on daily through uh, through the part of the region, connecting also different attractions uh, uh, um, on the roads, uh, also delivering package offer um, together with. Uh, uh, offering the package offer, am I lying? Yes, okay. Line, no, no is, is it okay? Am I hearable? You're online, but you don't share PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. Nice, fine. Mm -hmm. Go through screen. No, no, I don't see. Okay, uh, oh, fine. great. Sorry, sorry for this uh, technical troubles. Uh, so, uh, also connecting and uh, packaging uh, pro tourist products with education, educational offer for the schools but also uh, motivates the bottom-up development of uh, social economic sector actors. So this is also the example of uh, how one product can involve the other complementary one and, um, and it has an influence o o to the sector itself and the wider um, neighborhood um, uh, development. So what is also important in our region coming to the, to the end of, uh, of my short uh, journey uh, is that in uh, our sustainable journey, we're trying not to leave uh, anyone behind. That's, that's, man, that's why we are offering the region also um, uh, tourist products addressed uh, for the uh, people with the disability. We are focused on the accessi accessibility and inclusiveness uh, uh, we have like uh, training programs and then diving programs for the people with disability. Uh, a lot of offer addressed for um, for different um, kind of uh, special uh, needs. So we are aware that this is uh, that the tourism should be and have to be a tourism for 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 the all. So thank you for the for the opportunity to present uh, the West Marian uh, um, approach to the social economy. Uh, sustainable tourism building. Of course, I'm with you with all the discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we are sorry for uh, from the connection in Brussels, and it's uh, one of the variable you cannot uh, control in this kind of meeting. Uh, anyhow, thank you very much, and all the presentations uh, will be shared uh, afterwards uh, to to all the participants and the registered people, as well as the person with the commission, uh, we, we who already had received the the the, the presentation we had uh, by this morning. So we have now we are uh, this the journey as. Uh, has touched various destinations and various, uh, let's say, also topics. And uh, one is the importance of social economy model uh, to, to be able to provide uh, uh, wealth, uh, to provide uh, impact uh, at the local level, and, uh, uh, and also the digital tools. So I think that uh, uh, this is a, a perfect example <laughs> that we can have here with the uh, fair BNB Coop and Jonathan Reyes, uh, the floor is yours. Hi everyone, uh, thank you very much Luca and to the whole team for inviting us today to this uh, very inspiring session. I will share my screen uh, to start the presentation. Okay, I think you can see. Well, um, 
Yes, I'm here today uh, as co-founder of Fabian Mikov to talk about uh, our model and how, uh, no, how to bring this idea of digital platforms to uh, for, and merge with the social economy for a, a more sustainable way of tourism. Uh, I am here uh, as co-founder, but uh, I am representing a big network of uh, local communities, uh, organizations, and, and partners who are making this project possible, and who uh, really believe that uh, tourism and digital platforms can be a driver for positive change. Giovanna was talking before about the, the need to go beyond technology and to really put communities in the center if we really want to innovate. And that's the reason why we uh, started with this project. We started, as you can see, from an activist approach to answer to all the problems that the so-called sharing economy platforms were creating uh, in our cities. We know these problems, probably many of us have experienced them. And it's this idea that our cities are commod commodities for tourism and all the problems that it has created in terms of extractive economies, gentrification, uh, the displacement of locals uh, due to the increasement of uh, rental prices, uh, and at the end also the negative impact that the uh, mass tourism model uh, is, has created and is still creating in many of our cities. The numbers are there. Um, for example, in the case of Barcelona, I don't know, maybe these numbers are not updated. Probably Lu Lucia will know better than me this. But uh, the, um, the rental price in the city of Barcelona has increased a lot in the last years due to the pressure of the short-term rental industry. There has been an important uh, population decline in the city and in the historical city center where many, more than a half of the traditional local residents had to leave their apartments, their houses, because they couldn't afford it anymore due to uh, the pressure and the impact of the, um, the so-called sharing economy or, the, or, or, the, or how it has been um, applied uh, from some platforms. On the other hand, we, we saw and we see how, according to this uh, research made by booking.com, uh, the 87% of uh, people would prefer to travel in a more sustainable way, even if it would mean to pay more for it. So that's why reconnecting also to what Giovanna was saying before, we from several cities, from several places around the world came together to really create an alternative to, to propose a technology that would be at the service of local communities. Uh, that would be governed, uh, governed by locals, uh, that would have a redistributive model, a regenerative approach, and that would be accountable and transparent. And uh, how do we do it? Uh, uh, we do it through our, what we call our four pillars. Uh, I will go uh, uh, one by one now, but they are cooperativism, local impact, sustainable tourism, and local sovereignty, and transparency and lawfulness. This is the pillars that define how our model works. So at Fairbnb, uh, we are a cooperative and we decided to be a cooperative by, uh, from the very beginning because we want to remain independent from, uh, big, from our investors. We have investors, but their voting capacity is limited compared to the, 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 the governance power or the democracy that uh, our workers and our partners uh, can have within the, within the cooperative. Uh, and yeah, the end idea is to have a company, a technology that is, uh, is co-owned and is also uh, democratic because also the workers and the people affected by it can have a voice within the decisions. Then the other pillar I mentioned was the impact in local communities. Uh, we basically, do this from our redistributive model. We donate half of our revenues to fund a social uh, and community projects in every destination where we are present. And we create local employment in every place where we are present uh, through what we call our local ambassadors. The idea is to create a network of local cooperatives uh, in, in those places, in those countries where we are active, that creates local employment, uh, pays taxes locally, and at the end, uh, is promoting a more uh, localized economy. No? 
So uh, this is the model. Uh, you can see that as other platforms, we have the booking price in every for every booking that is set by the host who receives the, the money. And then we add a commission as other platforms do. The difference is that we split this commission. So uh, half of it goes to the technology, to the platform itself. But the other half goes to fund community projects uh, there where you as a traveler are booking a, as an apartment or an experience. And then from the part that goes to the platform, also part of it goes to fund, as I was saying, the work, the job of, of, a, of a local partner, of people working uh, at a local level, uh, helping us with the operation. So as you can see, what happens is that most of the value, most of the revenues remain at a local level going part of it of course to the to the global platform the technology and, and the coordination of the operations so i talked about cooperativism i talked about local impact and now i talk uh, about our pillar our last pillar in terms of uh, regenerative tourism how do we understand this first of all we as a platform uh, want to make sure that we are lawful and transparent so we collaborate First of all, we collaborate with local authorities there where we are to make sure that we understand local regulation and that we are compliant with it. Uh, we do this thanks to our ambassadors who, as I mentioned, are present in every place where we are active and help us dealing and, and, and working with local authorities. Then we have there uh, in the main uh, destinations, the main, most touristic destinations, we have our one house, one host, one house policy to avoid the entrance of big multi-owners who at the end have a negative impact in the housing industry, in the housing market. So we want to really avoid uh, this big impact. And then we have what we call our local sovereignty policies. So the idea of really uh, tailoring the platform to the needs of local communities. We don't believe that you, you don't have just a global platform that is the same in every place. We really believe that local communities has to define which kind of services, how the platform works in every city. So for example, in the case of Benin, just to mention an example, they are, as you know, they have a huge problem with tourism. So they said to us, okay, with being legal with local regulation, okay, with the one host, one house policy, but we want to go beyond. So they add an additional policy saying that they just want uh, local Venetians, local residents who can demonstrate that they have lived for a while in the city before uh, registering their apartments in the platform. And then we are now implementing, but we are just doing it now, a system to promote sustainable practices and reward them uh, between our hosts and our guests to really promote a different way of traveling. So for example, if you are a, a guest, a traveler, and if you go to a place and stay longer and not just for one or two days, uh, you get rewarded. Or the, uh, these kind of policies are the ones that we want to implement. Or if you travel by train, train instead of by plane, also the same. So we are working now on, on this. Now, very quickly, just to show you the platform, you can visit it at ferigambi.com. But basically, you see it's very similar to other ones that you may know, where you can look, uh, search by city, then find the place that uh, you prefer and book it. Before booking it, I was saying we are working on it. You can see the, what we call the sustainability budgets. So uh, the behaviors and the impact that the host you are visiting is having in the city. Uh, and also we are working also on the guest side uh, to see what impact you are having, what projects you are funding. And uh, as I mentioned, trying to promote and reward sustainability practices, but this something is still in progress. And then once you have booked the, an apartment, the difference is that then you can see the local projects in the city you are visiting and decide which one to fund. And then at the end also visit the projects and engage in the local community activities. This is for the short-term rental, but uh, as I mentioned, we uh, emerged uh, not just to create a, another uh, platform, but really to transform the model and to, and to bring a, a more sustainable uh, and fair tourism industry. So we are working now on other lines, other services, like the fair experiences and the midterm. And re really very soon also we will 
include uh, fair hold, what we call fair holders. So the idea is to really offer a 360 degrees experience in, in sustainable tourism. And nothing before ending, really uh, inviting you to become a fair host, become an ambassador in your cities, a partner. I have seen really interesting realities here we could partner with and also travel with us. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, fair BNB is a very well-known platform. Uh, I think it was important to uh, focus now to to show the the, the 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 new the new part the new things and especially this uh, concrete uh, connection with uh, with the local hosts uh, and with the local development which is important uh, th thank you very much we are uh, we uh, go ahead Luca, so and Luca, i hope that at the end i i have a question for for jonathan uh, yes, uh, uh, we, we will leave the questions for, for the end, after the, all the presentation. But uh, if it's uh, urgent, urgent, you can have a quick no, question. Just, uh, no. just uh, to know if uh, can somebody be host for both uh, Airbnb and Fairbnb? Yeah, very quickly. Yes, always that you are compliant with the local regulation and with the fair B &B local policies. As I mean, I mean it's not excluding. Uh, we are not against hosts that are on Airbnb. We really think that you can be both, but we want fair hosts. So if you are a fair host and you are in Airbnb, you can also be on fair B of course. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, we will have some time, hopefully, for, for for Q&A uh, after the, uh, uh, the, um, the meeting. So uh, now, uh, Ranko uh, from uh, Croatia, Cedra Split, the floor is yours. I don't see you anymore on the screen. Ranko Milic. Ranko, can you hear me? You hear me? <laughs> yes. Sorry, sorry, my window just disappeared. I was looking for the window, but it was not visible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, to, to <laughs> all these, kinds of technical you, challenges. <laughs> is uh, okay. performing. Yeah. Uh, uh, strangely yeah okay okay no problem never mind i'm just here sorry uh i will share my screen do you see it now do you see my presentation yes okay yes. thanks so thank you for for, for this uh, time opportunity to, to to share something of uh, uh, our work as well i'm uh, uh, really, really, really looking forward actually to synergizing with some of you guys uh, you presented before uh, our approach is a little bit uh, uh, different uh, in a way that we are actually trying to uh, work uh, uh, in a in a in a in a way that is connected uh, with the uh, urban planning and urban development connected with the uh, tourism development and destination management. But uh, I would like to share this uh, perspective, especially because of the connection with uh, some of the new European policies like European Bar House and similar. But, but I think it's, it can be very well connected to, to what you presented before. So actually, uh, why I think that uh, eco-social economy, I, I used the term eco-social economy, you will, you will see later a little bit more about that. Uh, uh, why is uh, relevant for tourism today? Uh, because mostly, at least in Croatia, but I believe uh, all over the place, uh, uh, tourism uh, is developed uh, in, in a spontaneous way and uh, often is developed in, this, in the direction of low added value tourism. And tourism, on, especially in some destination, it's actually swallowing all the economy and becoming a, a monoculture mono of tourism. 
especially in uh, attractive destinations like Adriatic coast or Mediterranean or many cultural uh, heritage sites or natural heritage uh, the sites, natural uh, areas, it becomes uh, driven uh, just by tourism. And this leads then sometimes to, to other problems like mass tourism, over tourism, what we call in Croatia apartmentization, but it's actually about turning all the, 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 the accommodation into tourist uh, residences like uh, you guys also presented in Fair Airbnb and touristification again gentrification of the of, of the cities and, uh, and and the coastal areas also the trivialization of the, of the culture and culture is becoming uh, consum consumed as 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 a, as a very narrow and very shallow experience uh, they call it disneyfication or cultural degradation of this uh, of this uh, immense values we all have uh, as, as 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 places as as uh, uh, as nations and and, and uh, uh, this, this is not uh, something which 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 is which just to be supported so actually it's also created so all, all kinds of exclusion but also so seasonal economies and communities where young people are not inspired to live and they leave these places in spite of the of the of the richness this tourism is creating uh, is actually pushing out uh, people from these places uh, of, because of the, of course, uh, among others, uh, low quality jobs, uh, underemployment and other things. And of course, uh, it creates a debt of industries. Uh, in my city, actually, we, not, we now have, I'm from Split, actually, in Croatia, but also uh, work uh, across the Dalmatian coast in many cities and all industry is dead. And now you have tourism as the only industry and connected industries this, uh, uh, that are functional, but all other is uh, decaying or, or already dead. So and, and we have then a huge number of abandoned brownfield areas, and all these things are something that can be connected with the, with the solutions. And we are so bothered by all these problems. And uh, as eco-social innovators uh, who who try to apply some of the of the entrepreneurial approach, social entrepreneurial approach, including agile. And uh, approaches uh, uh, we develop something we call wise agile strategic development ecosystem, so that we uh, co-design with local communities and create strategic initiatives, programs, and projects uh, together with uh, local governments, uh, regional governments, but also national parks, nature parks, cultural institutions, uh, and also civic sector and and, uh, and the social uh, uh, enterprises, but also uh, normal uh, enterprises. So we are organized as a cluster for eco-social innovation develop and development, uh, and we are a quintuple helix cluster that actually connects uh, not only businesses, uh, education and research institutions and, and local government, but also civil society and uh, nature or ecosystem uh, uh, protection entities, uh, both in public and private and civic sector. Uh, and also uh, um, one of the main cluster members and cluster leaders is a, a small immediate small company Upol uh, group which uh, actually is also dedicated to the same mission of creating prosperous uh, well healthy and fair places communities municipalities and management systems actually we are uh, cooperating and, and through the cluster of organizations and this Two, two organizations are the main in, in the cluster, actually, those who are driving the change. What we do, we co-design and co-manage scalable uh, interventions uh, in tourism. Uh, we, we actually uh, push the term regenerative tourism, and I like that some of the presenters also use the concept of regeneration, because I think that the present state uh, is not sustainable anymore. We need to regenerate not only uh, not our uh, ecological or natural ecosystems, but also social and, and economic uh, ecosystems. And so regenerative term is something which is much closer to my heart. And we are trying to push this sort of approach through eco-social economy. Uh, actually, we are using this the, the context of uh, environmentally aware uh, social economy and deeply embedded into green and but not all green but regenerative practices and using the innovation uh, and also trying to uh, embed the new policies like uh, European Bauhaus as I said 
to, to, to develop new sort of places, cities, regions, states, macro regions. We are working with, uh, with, with uh, now several strategic projects like Adriatic Union region to develop strategic interventions at, at the level of Adriatic Union region uh, together with the, with the Sustainable Tourism Thematic Steering Group uh, at the level of the Adriatic Union region. And now we are working with the Mediterranean region for the similar uh, initiative. Uh, in, in order to uh, create initiatives that can really re help regenerating people, organizations, and spaces and uh, ecosystems. Um, we also uh, try to develop uh, uh, scalable solutions uh, using uh, digital uh, uh, solutions as well. Uh, we are developing projects um, uh, funded either by public funded, uh, funded public sources, uh, mostly through EU funding and, and local funding, but also private sources. And uh, uh, we, we are developing some sort of, uh, of, of brands that we would like to, to, to use as, a, as an eco-social economy uh, you know, models and and uh, and solutions for for regeneration of of uh, different uh, systems and places. For instance, we are very much uh, uh, focused on on uh, uh, nation, national park and nature parks in Croatia, and we have developed a biosphere as uh, some sort of a methodology and a hub for uh, uh, supporting of regeneration of places which are under some sort of uh, nature protection. But this nature protection sometimes actually is uh, 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 made from uh, top down and then actually also pushing people out of these areas because, because they cannot live uh, under these uh, uh, restrictions that are there and they don't have knowledge and skills uh, and resources to develop some uh, uh, solutions for their uh, sustainable life there. We are also trying to use uh, um, uh, regenerative agriculture and also digital uh, solutions that we are uh, that we are developing at the moment they are, they are in, 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 a, in a earlier stage of development but maybe some of uh, the, the solutions you presented can be also uh, integrated uh, or we can uh, help uh, in maybe to develop some gamification and uh, tokenization solutions for for the for the existing uh, uh, platforms that you that you already presented um so how actually eco-social economy can really help the tourism is actually that we can bring uh, human values back to the to the uh, tourism uh, and to put it in the, in the in the in the center of the development uh, people and and the values in the center of development of course uh, 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 with the new business models that are uh, uh, part of that uh, and also using uh, agile uh, environmental social and governance investment models uh, in this, uh, I would like to share just only a few slides about some regeneration projects that we have been doing as in, a, in a collaborative way with cities and the local public and private and civic stakeholders. This is one old fortress in Shibanik city, which is now become became became uh, a, a hot spot for cultural events uh, in, at, at the east part eastern part of the of Croatian Adriatic. And uh, uh, similar things are happening across cities. So we are helping cities developing strategies for integrated development and developing the brownfield uh, sites to, uh, to, to, to turn them into hubs for our sustainable and regenerative tourism development, but also for uh, uh, value chain creation together with other state sectors like agriculture. So we are developing uh, uh, business ecosystems for, for, for agricultures that, uh, that uh, can enable a short supply chain for tourism in these areas. We are also uh, regenerating. This is an example of one uh, military uh, military complex that was turned into the into the hub for sustainable tourism uh, in a, a, a national park Poklenica, uh, in nature park Velebit. So this is uh, one example of these regeneration projects and what we are now trying to do together with the destinations which are uh, uh, burdened by the over tourism is actually to, uh, to turn them into leaders of sustainable and regenerative tourism. Uh, we are actually uh, working with them on pro proposals of strategic projects which I already mentioned. Um, for the Adriatic Union region and the Mediterranean region, and you are all invited if you are interested to somehow participate in this uh, uh, endeavor. For the Dubrovnik, we are uh, developing uh, both infrastructural and soft element projects. Uh, so there are uh, 
design, redesign of the whole uh, city areas based on the regenerative uh, uh, econ and eco-social economy approaches. Um, uh, we are also developing several pilot projects in other brownfield areas in Croatia uh, together with the uh, counties and, and regions. This is one river area which is planned to, which is actually now a brown, complete brownfield area with the uh, uh, really nasty uh, uh, images of, of uh, abandoned industry sites and uh, a lot of pollution. Uh, we see it as a future uh, uh, very attractive uh, green uh, and blue innovation uh, uh, area. Together with local communities, uh, we are developing strategies and projects and plans to regenerate these areas into very attractive uh, places. We also work with smaller rural communities uh, and uh, worked on regeneration of, of, of their places and, and into, into uh, uh, research and development innovation hubs for, for uh, uh, not just tourism, but also uh, other interesting uh, uh, sectors uh, uh, for their communities. Actually, uh, we are trying to connect uh, with, with them and develop uh, uh, solutions that uh, use the existing unused, uh, unused uh, uh, areas and turn them into regenerative hubs. Uh, we actually try to use uh, uh, um, uh, shared wealth investment models, where actually all in, uh, involved will become part of the of the of the of the cake of of, of the profit. They're using the, uh, all elements of uh, in all, all stages of investment as part of the of the of the business model. And uh, we are actually looking for uh, cooperation with with uh, with all sorts of public and private uh, organizations, institutions uh, on all sorts of uh, uh, planning uh, and strategizing activities. Uh, we also uh, would like to uh, invite you to, to to become part of the strategic initiatives of strategic projects, uh, uh, also to work on pilot sites because I think demonstration projects are the best way to promote new regenerative uh, approaches uh, uh, and also I suggest we use the cluster model combining research, development, innovation uh, with the other uh, uh, best practices and of course new technologies and industries like 5.0 uh, which actually is uh, uh, high tech for uh, for good or high tech in the service of uh, people and communities and, and ecosystems. And uh, just recently, maybe uh, the newest uh, initiative that together with DSIS, uh, we initiated, uh, we, we initiated uh, actually DSIS is, uh, will, will be host of, uh, of innovation working group for eco-social economy and European Bauhaus uh, with a special topic on tourism. And you are all invited to become part of this initiative and to create a, a work plan for the next period that will actually capitalize the social economic uh, resources uh, and tourism in a, in a, in a synergy, synergistic way. So this, that's, I hope, uh, a short presentation. If you have any uh, questions or proposals, you are very welcome. I would like to really see how we can create synergies around these uh, uh, areas of common interest. Thank you very much. And I'm, welcome, I'm welcoming any for the communication. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ranko. Uh, uh, also for you, there is a lot of materials, so, so many ideas and concrete things happening and very difficult to compress in 15 minutes, but <laughs> we are also here to, to activate uh, links and move ahead with uh, also other initiative. So um, now, um, uh, Lucia Hernandez, uh, uh, Professor Lucia Hernandez uh, from uh, also We Share. Um, we are ready to 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 listen uh, to listen to you um, because uh, there is a lot of uh, on the floor. I think you were already aware of um, many things, but now the floor is yours. We cannot hear you. What about now? Yes, okay. So thank you. Thank you, Luca, for inviting me to this session. And it was interesting because uh, you know that is, I, I was hearing 
these words about regeneration platforms and social innovation. So it it is my favorite topics and and I am very happy to be here with that. So just to introduce myself, I have spent like 10 years more or less in around the sharing economy, what we call at the beginning sharing economy, collaborative economy in in Spain. And after all these uh, platforms emerged and grew a lot, we started to uh, call them platform economy as the macro theory in order to uh, define all these organizations that behind them there is the platform business model because this is a business model innovation behind other things or among other things. And so because uh, I was very interested in understanding how this platform business model, because it's, very, it's more much scalable, and how this platform model could really impact in, in social innovation and, and so on. I have spent all the, these 10 years working and doing research and doing, I'm working with companies and organizations, public and private, in order to move from the industrial way of doing to the platform way of doing. And I was specialized in tourism because I studied tourism. My first international um, conference, it was in Portugal with the ISTO and Mr. Bellinger invited me. So it is a pleasure to be to be here with you again. And I'm going to, to I, I hope that I can bring something new that is basically this holistic point of view or systemic point of view, you know, that we really I'm going to share my, my screen so we can go through the presentation. Okay, so you know that that we live in this complex, dyna dynamic, and a life uh, system that is completely interconnected with different actors that usually work with a higher of objective. No, uh, nature has his own values, and nature knows very well how to do it in order to restore, to regenerate, and so on. So we can learn something from nature because regeneration is basically uh, inspired by how nature works and how living systems uh, work. So uh, it's interesting to understand how we can learn from there in order to apply to solutions to problems that we have as, as humans. So the tourism sector is the same. It's plain and of diverse and different types of um, actors, of entities, we call them entities that are individuals or organizations interacting all the time in this in this system not fully coordinated until now so um the problem i would say or maybe it's a potential also is that uh, we have seen during centuries western culture has seen the universe as a fragmented thing no? made up made up of different parts that are not interrelated and uh, we have designed from this mechanistic point of view in isolation in a fragmented way entire systems like education like wherever like medicine like tourism for sure no so i think that we can do it better um, with with bringing this uh, way of thinking a more systemic way of thinking so designing just for one of the entities in the ecosystem, like is the case of tourists, could um, not help us to really look at the interconnections that are existing in, in all the system. No? So what we do with platforms is basically to really design for relationships. So we design for the tourists in relationship with the citizen in relationship with the private enterprises in relationship with that in relationship with that. So we saw at the beginning of the presentation that we are in a system that, that is really interconnected with other sectors. And when value chains break down, as it happened during the pandemic, we see all it led us with image of uh, these um, places uh, with no life that are not really contributing to natural or to human connections. No? This is a, a picture from Benidorm that, uh, as you know very well, uh, is a place that is fully designed for tourism. Uh, and I would say that all these um, global whatever challenge that we have, and that is not only just for tourism, for sure, but climate crisis, um, um, value chains breakdown, 
another uh, consciousness uh, from citizens and how they see the environment how they want to live as jonathan told us and how and the fall of uh, trusting institutions and a high pressure environment that we are living more complex even more complex and you know that um, uncertainty is like getting closer no? you you, I, you really don't know what is going to happen in one year so this led us in an in an environment or in a in a position that uh, show us how the tourism sector is fragile and it's a very fragile system and during the pandemic we could see that some sectors went more or less well but some other sectors it was an impact very very high for the tourism sector itself for all the actors that are involved in this in this sector so i, I would say that tourism needs a transformation as you know very well and 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 well, I, I would say that uh, one thing that we can do is to move from this uh, reductionist or mechanical or mechanistic or Cartesian way of seeing things to a life system logic of just one only system in order to create for a win, win, win relationship. That is basically the actors involved and the environment or the context where they live. Um, platform strategies, I would say that if platforms uh, do something very, very well, is that they um, they look for inefficien inefficiencies in the market. They are very um, good uh, or they fit very good when uh, it's a fragmented, a very, very fragmented market as the tourism sector is, when it's very bureaucratic or there are high barriers of entry so this is like the the, the environment the, the perfect space in order to create a platform strategy <coughs> sorry so what is a platform basically a platform is a business model that allows like multiple parts interact producers and consumers by providing an infrastructure that connects them so they allow the auto organizations between the entities in the ecosystem creating this space in order to help them. It's uh, also a powerful narrative that attracts the pool, uh, the participants inside the platform in order to create value together. And it's for sure also some protocols and terms of services and so on. I would say that with uh, Airbnb, we, we, can, we can see how these protocols and terms of services are put it into a platform, no? how they create like uh, some kind of elements in order to, for the projects or the people or apartments that are inside the company, they can really fit with this idea of sustainability or how can they contribute to social innovation, or whatever. So what I did in the last two years, or more than two years, it was to research the intersections between platform design and regenerative design in order to really create platform strategies for regeneration. This is like my focus uh, during the last two years. So if you are interested, there is a QR that you can, you can just make a picture and you are gonna be addressed to my blog and you can find there the article that I explained where I explained what is a regenerative platform business model that is basically this strategy is designed for an ecosystem of interconnected actors who coordinate their activity with a common goal, creating the conditions for the whole to thrive, flourish and evolve. This is the uh, definition of regeneration. So it's a step beyond sustainability. If sustainability is about to sustain what exists in order for future generations, generations to use, regeneration is about to regenerate, to restore damaged ecosystems or as a principle of design. So it's very difficult to standardize solutions because uh, it's based on the place where it's happening. So it's place-based initiatives. And those are some of the principles that uh, we are using in order to design um, as a guide in order to take decisions. So it needs to focus on the potential of the, not the problem, the potential. It needs to design for development of the entities inside the, the platform, but not only for the entities, uh, as, I, uh, as we are going to see now, and we have, to think about that everything is interconnected. So if you do something in one point of the system, it's gonna impact in the other part, in the other part of the system. 
amplifying or diversifying their effects. That is the most dangerous, dangerous thing. It needs to allow emergence. It means that when you are designing for relationships, happens things happen because um, there are people interacting, creating all the time, creating innovation, and it's there where is the, the innovation. It's in really in the entities in the ecosystem where the innovation can come from, because it will never come from, from just one um, central institution. It needs to design for evolution. That is one of the principles or the, the difference between system thinking and regenerative thinking is that regenerative thinking designed for evolution and for sure it needs to be from an holistic point of view. So what I did during this um, last year, it was to uh, create, because I, I am working with a methodology in order to design platform strategies, helping organizations and where I did it is to create this um, new ecosystem map in order to really to integrate for the first time then non-human stakeholders. So what we have here, what, what we have is that, you know, that uh, systems, this is like, um, this could, could be seen as a repetition in all the system. So we are going to see this is the, the entire system. And then we, if we go deeper into the destination, for example, we are going to see that it's the same structure. So because life repeat itself in a fractal way. So we can add from different points of view and platforms for sure, what they do very well is to connect all these entities the most uh, closer to the um, to the platform strategy are usually where the platform or the owner of the platform or the cooperative or the um, whatever group of people are trying to decide so we have the non-human stakeholders that are could be impacted by the policies that are in the in this um, this system and i i like this idea of what uh, if the mountain could talk what uh, he or she would say if the beach could talk what uh, what he would say or what she would say whatever right so we need to take into account the context where the the, the initiatives or the projects are happening and this is something that no uh, platforms but no uh, enterprises in general if, for sure, um, we have social uh, platforms or social enterprises or big corporations that are more uh, aware of the, of the context where they are operating. And then we need to really to integrate this idea that we are in a context that is in the, the story, the culture, whatever it is in the, the traditions, the architecture that is in the, in the place. In a second uh, circle, we have the human stakeholders, we have the communities, the food systems, all these that we saw at the beginning of the presentation, public services, <coughs> whatever media for sure academia and in the in the closer circle we have the really the entities um providing um value in the ecosystem and the ones that are consuming this value <coughs> sorry so we have here the resident that is interesting i'm gonna go uh later on but in any case each of these circles needs to add value to the other circle. So if we really want to create, if we want to, to face complexity, we need to, in some way, this is a way, cluster them by the role that they are interacting or the role that they, they have in the system, how they are behaving in the system, and then we are going to see how we can coordinate them. In a regenerative or system thinking, we start from the macro, always from the macro, and we go deeper to the entity itself. How we can create the conditions for the entity to evolve, to flourish, to wherever, and how we this can be impacted impacted in all the circles in the um, in the in the in the system. So the other thing is that what platforms do very well is to connect all these entities in just one place. So they um, because they reduce values uh, re reduce barriers of entry because uh, something that the platforms uh, do for sure is to reduce the cost of transactions. It means reduce the cost of interactions. So if you are creating the space to connect directly in a peer to peer relationship the entities in the ecosystem, you are allowing them to coordinate themselves 
to match their needs. I have, you have, you can match this need and through a system of um, ratings and so on, create the enough reputation or the enough trust in order for the interactions to happen. Because if there is no trust, there is no interactions in the system. And, um, and basically they are hotbeds of learning because of the peer to peer relationships. So it's not you. When we are designing platform strategies, it's not about the company, it's not about the organization, it's not about how they, um, whatever their assets or their capabilities or whatever. No, 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 no. It's about the system. It's about the ecosystem. It's about how they need and how I can design for them in order to emerge or for them to emerge their potential facing the pressures and the, the, that they live every day, creating a more um, convenience and more valuable space context where they can really evolve and, uh, and flourish. And then this is impacting in all the, these circles that we saw, because at the end, if you are creating uh, wealth in a point of the system, this is going to be uh, this is going to impact for sure the rest of the system so what they do very well is to connect the two sides of the of the market producers and consumers where what what they did is to reduce the cost of transaction so more niches are also allowed to participate in the market they are hotbeds of learning and they are uh, more efficient for sure more transparent because is the rating of the people that is um rating uh the, the, the products of the services even the profile of the of the of the people or the entities involved and and for sure they are more um more economic because once they have the infrastructure aggregating new entities there is no cost and even another thing because they uh, leverage on network effects it means that more entities in the ecosystem more value for all the system they are more scalable and they uh, grow uh, faster than others, of course, uh, with the right uh, strategies of, of growth. Um, some, some, some examples um, that, uh, that is interesting, and just one thing about that, that I think that is also interesting is that is the resident, right? So, because we don't want to just uh, design for one or some entities in the ecosystem because we want to design for everyone we want to we need to include the resident so how we can include the resident for sure we can include it in participation so asking them uh, whatever to contribute to vote for some initiative or whatever this is a way of doing what we are are seeing is other kinds of um, co-creation that is not just participation, but it's co-creation. They are participating in the governance of the de design in the public policies or co participating in the governance of the uh, of their own company, organization or whatever. And uh, and there is this third that is the four P's, P -P 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 -P, that is public, private, people, partnerships. So we really need to include the citizen, the resident in the design of the public policies, because uh, really the, the, the thing that we can really generate a uh, social impact is to, um, to work to re regenerate from the down to the top. So we can see the system from the macro, how is uh, in informing the rest of the entities, but we need to uh, really to impact on on that and what platforms do is to basically to impact in the role of the entities in the ecosystem in one of the levels of the, the system so they can really uh, when we are designing for um when we are designing for um uh for the role of the entity is more scalable because we can't really uh design just for for the entity itself if, if think about if we want to create a platform for training, we can't design just for yoga teachers. We need to design for the role of the ecosystem that are really the trainers. So some examples that could be interesting in order to think about 
Ranko, I think that did it uh, super well explaining us these uh, these examples. Those are more initiatives that are that they are interesting because are like uh, bringing some inspiration and ideas on how really could be the projects that we want to really to integrate in the platform that we need to to create, and these G adventures that they are really uh, using tourism uh, as a force for good. And then there are small groups and uh, they, the guides are locally based uh, and they uh, make sure that the initiatives that they visit or they, yeah, they, they participate during their, um, their tourism visits uh, are um, basically the 50% is to be owned by a local person. So this is a way of really creating regeneration in the place. The other thing is local. Local is a very interesting uh, initiative, it's a travel agency that they are like integrating the citizens, local citizens in um, low impact initiatives in order to generate incomes, that this is other thing that are uh, coming from platforms. I don't know if I need a job. This is very related with future of, of, of the of work. I don't know if I if I want a work a job, sorry, but sure that I need income. So how these people could generate incomes could be through all this activity integrated in the platform. And of course, uh, they realized that the, the context where they live, the nature, the environment where they live, it was most important and they need to preserve um, this context. Proco Reef is an experience that is also interesting because they are planting corals. But it, what it is interesting for me is that when they uh, do the, the, the experience, they show to the people, to the visitants, also how it's impacting the coral planting in the, in the ecosystem, in the area. So you can really see with your eyes how just acting in one point could impact in the rest of the system. And um, Playa Viva, that I would say that is one of the hotels, um, is an example of how we can really create a, a hotel from this point of view of regeneration. Uh, the hotel already exists. What they did was to reform, uh, to do repressions and so on. And they created something really integrated completely in the, in the environment and with materials, with local materials, they have a permaculture uh, orchard in order to provide to the to the kitchen of the hotel, of the hotel. They pay a very uh, salary to the party, to the staff, creating also activities for the community and how they can really help all the community. They have an edible garden. So it's completely integrated, is um, integrating also the local people in, in furniture in uh, activities in whatever so this is uh, I, I would say that we can see this kind of uh, of um, projects that could uh, bring some regeneration to places and, and for sure to help to re regenerate uh, communities regenerate the soil regenerate the economy regenerate um the the, the neighborhood the, the the whatever no it's because that, that that idea that is is in a fractal way so I would say that I don't want to take more time because, um, yeah, basically because uh, I think that is, uh, I don't know if you have any questions or doubts about that. I am working also with some public institutions in order to integrate the regenerate, regenerative design and also platform design to really start to think from another point of view, how can really I can serve to the ecosystem in order for them to achieve their objectives and at the same time regenerate uh, the context where they where they live well thank you very much <laughs> i think it was a, a very inspiring and also complementary to some of uh, of the experiences we have seen so now um the floor is open and i would like to share the final uh, time that we have well the, the meeting was uh, set to, um, to close at uh, 12 30 but uh, uh, at least if we want to stay more there there, there is no problem of course um questions uh, ideas maurizio i saw you <laughs> moving <laughs> i have something to say because you have indicated me in the uh, uh, it's very low the the, the volume of uh, and 
No. Hmm. Blue. <laughs> Mauricio, go, go on, Avanti. Bye. 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 Let's try again. Well, uh, <laughs> sing. Thanks, sing. Uh, thank you, Lucia, because uh, you presented the responsible tourism. For sure. <laughs> it's all, always a question of, of levels. I, I don't like levels. But at least uh, I, I would say that it's, it's better to use it in a way that you can use the, the principles in order to take decisions, you know, that's a compass yes. Yes. in order to take the decisions. But for sure, it's responsible, it's, uh, yeah. it's social, it's a lot of things. Yes, but we share, we share the same principles and the same ideas, so it's, this is... This is relevant, important. Super. So I want to thank thank Diaz uh, for the invitation to participate in this uh, uh, high level uh, roundtable uh, and successful. And uh, I would like to mention two uh, experiences very briefly um, related to the role of social uh, social economy in tourism. The first one is the so-called community-based tourism, which is uh, defining everywhere in the world, spreading everywhere in the world, not only in the developing countries, everywhere. And it is based uh, and it's managed mainly by cooperatives or other kinds of uh, companies, but owned by local people. So. Uh, what I wanted to I wanted to mention uh, um, some what what happened some months ago. I participated in a conference in Tuscany, Tuscany, which is a, a region, a world famous region for tourism in terms of uh, arrivals, uh, in terms of, of uh, overnights, of revenues. And the, the councillor of uh, the tourism councillors of, of the region said by participating in this meeting where there were uh, about 42 community-based to, uh, community tourism companies, cooperatives, what he said, he said in our region we have everything, we have uh, some cities famous all over the world as Florence and other, and the sea, we have everything, but you are playing a big role for the internal areas, for the mountain areas, for the rural areas, which integrates our product. So you, are, you, you, uh, community-based uh, tourism uh, cooperatives, you are playing a strategic role for the region. This is this is important. And the, the second is related to my experience as expert in for the two main. Uh, uh, European Awards for Tourism, the European uh, Capitals of uh, Smart Tourism and Eden, uh, mentioned by Kirsty uh, two hours ago. And what happens? It happens that in, in many cities, uh, inhabitants create cooperatives or consortia and they play a big role for the sustainable development of their cities and, and, and uh, territories. And they are focused on the relationship between the host community and its guests. And uh, they, uh, they collaborate with local authorities for overcoming seasonability and over tourism. So they are playing a very big role, these, uh, these groups uh, in, the, in these cities and in these territories. So what I want to, to stress is that uh, social economy plays a strategic role in tourism, a strategic role. And, and also what, what uh, Pavel uh, uh, described to us confirms what I am saying. So not only in one country, but in all Europe, in the world, social economy is playing a big role, a strategic role in tourism. Thank you. Uh, may I? Yes, sure. 
now it's an open flexible. Yeah, th <laughs> thank you, Fabrizio, for, for, for your voice. Uh, we are common in our approach uh, to, to, to this topic and to the, to, to the role and uh, the needs of the developer of the sector. And uh, regarding this, uh, regarding these needs, I would also like to to, to point one 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 thing coming from our experience. Uh, yes, we are as a sector playing a key role in developing uh, the the tourism, but also the, the local development. We are different on the different level of the of the development. We we have like, great examples of developed uh, social cooperatives. Uh, we are experiencing them today, uh, also from Italy, our partners, uh, have, uh, and and. So on and so on, but also we have a lot of small uh, uh, organization on the beginning of the growth, and they what they are ex uh, experiencing uh, is, uh, is, in the, is you know is, is a barrier of entrance that uh, to, to to create uh, the sustainable uh, attractive offer uh, they need uh, some financing, and the problem with we are doing here in, in for example in Poland is that we are the, the social economy and that is. Uh, uh, Based on the local communities, starting startups coming from the societies, uh, has no enough, you know, um, investment funds to create effective and big a competitive uh, offer, and that what we need in the systematic approach of of, of the politics is also first understanding what we said before that we are the crucial. I mean, we are the sector tourist offer, sustainable tourist offer, and we need also the tools, finance, and to access to the financing, which will help this offer um, develop. Because sometimes the small um, startup from the local city is not competitive, for example, in, I don't know, re uh, renewable financing or, or donating for, for, for investment with commercial ones, which have a very strong uh, background. That uh, this is for sure they need to reach from the commission to find the tools which will support development. <clears throat> that, that's noted. Uh, uh, one of the, uh, of the goal of uh, this meeting, uh, uh, and then afterwards the results uh, were we, will be sent with them um, to 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 Patrick and to Christy, Kirsty, etc. Uh, Pavel, maybe you noticed that yesterday in in a, in, in a parallel room there was a Patrick Klein at, a, at our networking event uh, in in Brussels, and. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we, there is a strong attention from the Commission uh, to the, this uh, transition pathway, and the fact that uh, um, the, the responsible for the tourism unit mentioned uh, so, so much social economy and even community cooperatives is is a very good uh, good uh, news for us. Of course, we participated in the consultation uh, as DSIS and also as ISTO because we are a member of uh, of ISTO, and I think that uh, this helps. But it's also a signal that uh, uh, the time has changed, and it's it's a it's a different timing. Uh, well, uh, we are uh, let's say uh, active in these fields uh, since many years, and. Uh, uh, you remember how much was difficult to have uh, 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 European institutions uh, listening or even speaking about uh, social economy. Well, now things are, are better. And th th this meeting was also uh, a way for, um, for us to gather around, to find a line, to involve uh, all uh, also platforms, uh, to involve the uh, uh, expert practitioner to 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 go ahead and uh, to see how we can continue continuing breaking the highs and create uh, channels for for development um, charles the floor is yours yeah yes thank you well uh, thanks again to all the speakers uh, it's uh, very much in line I would say with uh, the topic of our next uh, World Congress uh, that will take place in Nazores next October, focus on the social dimension of sustainability. Because we talk a lot about of, uh, 
uh, environmental sustainability, economic sustainability, but the social dimension of sustainability um, is not uh, so much or as it should be uh, taken into account. And the experiences and uh, speeches we, we heard uh, this morning uh, are very uh, useful, uh, at least for us, to uh, um, prepare this, um, this uh, Congress. But um, I, I, my question to any of the uh, panelists uh, for this morning is, um, on one side, I believe that what we could call mainstream tourism uh, is taking into, into account more and more the sustainability, regeneration aspect, um, uh, local economy, the social economy concept. There's no doubt about it. And we, we can see it in the strategies and the planning of different destinations and so on. But on the other side, as it has been mentioned also by other experts, we, what we are seeing at this moment, after two years of pandemic, after all the catastrophes uh, linked to climate change, and uh, without talking about geopolitical tensions, what we're seeing now is that tourism and travelers and the industry in general is coming back uh, even uh, some say worse as it worse than uh, it was before uh, this pandemic. So people could ask, or, and I would like to ask you, <laughs> what else do we need uh, to, to provoke uh, uh, such a main, uh, uh, such a, a strong change regarding the mentalities of stakeholders, of travelers, of, uh, this is really a, a, a big question, or is it just a short-term trend, thinking that, well, people couldn't travel during two years and uh, things will come back uh, to the slowdown in, in a few months? So uh, I would like to hear you on, on this. Thank you. So we have uh, Giovanna first and then Paolo. Hmm. Yes. Uh, thanks. Uh, um, I agree uh, because uh, because uh, we can see that uh, uh, all uh, many things uh, are uh, the same, uh, uh, are not changed uh, after the pandemic. So we uh, we know. But uh, uh, I want to remember that, uh, for example, in Italy. Uh, now there is a piano of Borgos, uh, that means uh, a lot of investments uh, on uh, regeneration, uh, cultural regeneration of uh, internal area. So uh, this is a, a big opportunity uh, to change uh, the, the paradigm because uh, because uh, 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 because uh, um, there is uh, the, 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 the regeneration uh, is based on uh, cultural assets, uh, cultural landscapes, and uh, and uh, community and local community. Uh, so um, I think that uh, it is the first time that uh, in Italy, for example, there is uh, a plan uh, dedicated uh, to this uh, to this uh, rural and internal area and based on the cultural sector. Uh, I think that uh, in uh, in uh, in Europe too there is a dossier a dossier for rural development. And uh, I think that uh, it could be, it would be important to to mix uh, to mix uh, the the topic of social economy with uh, the topic of rural development uh, and uh, and to to do something uh, similar of uh, what in Italy the, uh, the the 
the, the, uh, the MIC, the ministry do with, uh, has done with the Borgos plan. I think that it is the first time that uh, Italy could be a, a, an example for uh, all, Italy, all Europe, I think, the first time. <laughs> I hope, I hope. Thank you. <laughs> Borgo is a, a small village, a small rural. Small village is Borgos. I think it's the same, no? Small villages in rural areas or okay. internal areas. Pavel. Uh, thank you. At, at the beginning, I would like maybe answer to Charles. Uh, what I think uh, that uh, we we are different now. We experience uh, the, uh, the pandemic and it has a huge impact and influence uh, on our attitudes, uh, expectation and our, um, our way of being and the way to thinking about the um, free time, about the traveling. Uh, of course, it has a um, bad impact as, uh, as you noticed that we are expecting um, experiencing the change. In, in the way of movement uh, uh, of, of, of global movement, but on the second way, I would say would say something important uh, for for also from my point of view, the social economy sector offer tourist offer that uh, we also learned that we would starting we started to think differently about uh, looking uh, looking for the um, traveling spending the time. Uh, we focused on the tourism of emotion, of uh, something uh, more intimate experience, uh, and and this is also a great opportunity for the for the sector itself, or for the tourism itself, for the local development in social economy, and uh, we started to, to we we started to wisely choosing the destination, wisely choosing the experience, and I think that we. Uh, what would be, we were in the momentum, we said already, we are in the momentum of social economy, we are momentum for, of sustainability, uh, of a green, a green transition. We are aware that we should to be how we have to be. And we also are aware that we, now we have to choose. And I think that we, we should somehow also deliver the, the tools which will support this, um, this choosers from the client side of view. We'll, uh, we, we'll promote and offer the sustainable offer of uh, sustainable touring deal by social economy. I, do, I don't know, what, I, I can not say that it's one or better solution, but maybe some um, IT tools, which will be not even global, can be European. We can say, let's say in this way, where, where I will be the client able to understand what I'm choosing and why I'm choosing that or that on the side of experience, on the side of social impact, which I will also give by um, um, buying this or that, um, that service. So uh, that's also the space for our cooperation of this, as, as a sector, as a stakeholder. So I think that's, uh, that's one of the spaces which we can develop in the, in the future. And I would very, uh, be happy to hear your um, perspective on this, uh, on this topic. Uh, uh, <laughs> perspectives. Uh, uh, Pavel, you, you have put a, lo a lot on uh, on the table. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I mean, we put. I will put one myself. Uh, we in in promoting the, the 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 tourism, we think locally, regionally, mm -hmm. eventually nationally. Uh, now we are talking about sustainable tourism, about the tourism which uh, is dealt by social economy sector, which is. Uh, giving not only the experience, uh, but also is influencing the, the, the local development of our whole European community. And uh, that's what I'm proposing, just to think that maybe if we, now we are talking the tourism ecosystem, social economy proximity ecosystems, and they have their influences and their all transition pathways. But uh, my proposal is maybe if we want to make a transition for the whole Europe, so we can, um, start thinking horizontally in building the offer of the social economy system in the whole Europe, giving the chances for, uh, for, the, for the tourists, for, for, for the clients of our entities for us, 
just to choose wisely and have a wide scope of perspective uh, of possibilities. I mean, I'm trying to say that maybe we can try start to, to building some kind of hub for traveling, for social sustainable traveling, for the giving opportunity to choose uh, and to also to promote about this kind of hub, different um, um, different destinations, uh, dif uh, different offers, and uh, uh, making uh, making also uh, also helping uh, in promoting sustainable uh, accessible sorry tourism. That's only my my proposal for the. Very, very clear. Maurizio, you raised your hands. Yes, just for, for the question posed by Charles. Well, um, we must be aware that uh, the market is free. The market is free. Nobody can compel somebody to go to a place instead of to another place or in a, in a, in a season instead of in another season. This is impossible. But uh, the institutions at uh, state uh, level or, or municipal level, they have the to some tools for, inf for influencing the market. For Giovanna already said, uh, told, uh, said uh, something about, uh, said, described the action of, of our government for, for the villages, but there are also other possibilities. For example, through the promotion through the promotion it's possible or to, to the for, through the financial support to the organization of events we give you we give you financial support if you organize the, fest the festival or this event in this period instead of the another period in this place in, instead of in this place etc so the institutions and the, the, the municipalities have some tools for influencing uh, the market Thank, thank you very much, uh, Maurizio. Uh, I think time is running and um, we are already beyond the, the, the <laughs> let's say, our mm -hmm. agenda. But I would like to not, not to leave uh, uh, Pavel uh, uh, contribution, uh, let's say, unheard. Uh, because, uh, uh, and I think we can promise something, at least from the SS side, because this event is part of uh, well, uh, I don't call it a strategy, it will be too, <laughs> too much, but uh, at least of an idea uh, to, to uh, work more on this uh, topic where, where um, social meets tourism and what we can do together. We seen there is a, a, a lot of potential and this first meeting was uh, also um, useful to start uh, opening this uh, this conversation reopening this conversation from for some of us what we uh, what is happening in the next uh, months uh, not not so long that will we will publish uh, um, a report uh, my colleagues uh, especially uh, my colleague Beatrice uh, is uh, is already working on it and uh, it's uh, um, she's here in the meeting as well so we are collecting examples and we'll uh, uh, produce a, a report uh, about uh, uh, existing uh, practices, ideas and line of development in more or less like we see uh, today. Then what is next? I think we have plenty of opportunities to, to keep on uh, working together and developing these ideas. Uh, the the platform the if I understand well your uh, your uh, suggestion is uh, very ambitious but there are uh, let's say to have a common one but there are already existing one and maybe we can start connecting the dots which is also a um, a way to uh, how to say to do it uh, uh, step by step uh, concretely because. Uh, uh, well, uh, Maurizio, uh, he, uh, Maurizio is uh, uh, president of the um, Italian Responsible Tourism Association, and they, for instance, already have uh, uh, tour operators in the, in the network, which are uh, already active and then a pretty huge experience in that. And uh, uh, some uh, digital platforms are already existing. Uh, we have seen a uh, Airbnb. And uh, well, we have seen uh, COP Culture uh, action. Ranco uh, has, has a lot of, uh, of initiatives uh, going on. So I think we are already have some materials. Uh, 
and uh, some starting point. So my first proposal will be to start from what we already have and see if and how we can connect. Uh, and uh, of course, always uh, uh, with, with an eye open or maybe more than uh, one eye open on possible EU or not necessarily EU fundings. We know there are huge opportunities in uh, the MED program, for instance, in various interreg. Uh, there uh, will be this is uh, this year is not uh, it's uh, over but for next year for instance also an interreg europe is uh, really something that uh, that uh, could uh, could have been done there are some projects in the pipeline on social innovation and uh, you already know some so i think that uh, but the, the, all these different and then there will be not so well in, in a short time a call from the single market program, which is uh, the COSME essentially program that I, uh, uh, and uh, I was, um, si since it's managed by DigiGrow, I'm pretty sure that we will uh, we'll have, uh, let's say, they will have uh, uh, more, uh, a lot of interest. And then this event was also to, to, to you know, to start uh, opening a conversation with them because uh, now they have, well, they are not attending here, so they, they don't hear me, but uh, they have, have hold the interest to know what are the good, reliable partners on which they uh, can need to build their, 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 their strategy this uh, to in transition. We are pledging, we are, we are committing to them, but they, in order to have the European strategy successful, they have to invest. And they know they want to invest on, on the organization and on the initiatives that they consider reliable. So this is the mechanism that uh, I think strategically we, we, can, we can develop. Um, at least this is Diaz's contribution to, to it. But uh, as, as Ranko said, because uh, we have um, uh, also a, a group uh, that is for Diaz's members, but open to, to all the, 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 the people, organization, the persons who want to participate, developing a similar initiatives connected to the new European Bauhaus, to the green and social innovation and so on. So in the end, and then I conclude, I think that very often we are speaking very much of the same thing with different uh, languages and different words. Uh, but uh, we are very, very, well, the, the basis is the same. Uh, where you can call it social economy, sometimes it's uh, regenerative, sometimes it's uh, um, responsible tourism, but these, these are different parts of the game, but we are, uh, I think, in a, in a very common strategy and, and value and culture. That was my, my two cents. So, I would conclude uh, here uh, like this uh, and uh, with a commitment from, from the ESI side to get back to you with a um, summary of the meeting, um, sharing all the presentation, also with the European Commission, uh, and uh, keep an eye open and after the, the vacations, uh, after the holidays, uh, if you are available, we can have a second round um, also with other participants and very hopefully in presence because the, in presence this, this works, works much better. But uh, so, and um, Charles has already mentioned the, the, the World uh, uh, Tourism Congress in um, um, uh, Azzorre, right? I don't know how to, yes. to say it in English. Azores, yes. Yeah, Azores. <laughs> Uh, but uh, if there is uh, something also maybe simpler uh, in terms of travel uh, that we can organize, uh, not necessarily in Brussels, but uh, also, you know, uh, in, uh, uh, in Italy or uh, in, um, in Croatia, well, not, uh, not because uh, Azores are pretty, uh, let's say, uh, committing as a journey is not like, uh, we, we are available to uh, organize also a uh, um, an event uh, in Brussels or in one of our cities in Rome or in Milan, which is easily joinable to, to have a, a meeting. Uh, I finish here. I don't take more of your time. I hope uh, it was useful and uh, uh, let's stay in touch. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.
Bye. Thank you. Bye. Ciao. Bye.